theorem states that if a function is strictly increasing on its domain, so it's strictly monotonic, then for every x1 and x2, where x2 is bigger or equal to x1, the corresponding y value will also be bigger or equal to the one for the other x. So specifically, it's, say, it's stating that this goes both ways. So if a y value here is bigger or equal to another y value, then it must mean that the x value for the first one is bigger or equal to the x value for the second one. So the order goes both ways. That's why it's called an order, order isomorphism. Essentially, the order is preserved. So um, for both uh, parts of the proof, since it's an if and only if um, theorem, we have to prove it by contradiction. So for the first part, we're saying that if the function is strictly increasing, and for this we're just going to use the definition of strictly increasing, then for sure we're going to satisfy the second part. So for every x2 that is bigger or equal to x1, that will imply the f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x1, and also other way around. So we'll start off with the definition of strictly increasing, which is that if you take every two x's, x1 and x2, such that x2 is bigger than x1, then f of x2 will also be bigger than f of x1. So um, because the function is also uh, increasing, it's not just strictly increasing, we can also put an equal signs in here. So this is because it's also increasing. So this way we've already proved the first part just by using the definition. So we've showed that if uh, this part holds, then automatically this will hold as well. Now we need to show that the opposite will hold uh, true. So if f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x1, then that must imply that x2 is bigger or equal to x1. So we're going to show by contradiction why the opposite would not be um, possible. So uh, we're going to suppose that if f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x1, then actually x2 would have to be smaller than x1. That would be the, the opposite of that, of what we're trying to prove. But we know that if x2 is smaller than x1, since the function is um, strictly increasing, that must imply that f of x2 is smaller than f of x1, which exactly contradicts what we just said over here. So this here was from the definition of strictly increasing. And since this completely contradicts what we uh, knew was true at the beginning, then x2 cannot be, act cannot be smaller than x1, which means it must actually be bigger or equal to x1. And that completes the proof for the first part. Now for the second part, we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to say that if x2 is bigger or equal to x1, if it implies that f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x1, then all of this must imply that the function is strictly increasing. So, uh, so far from this, we can see that we satisfied a definition of increasing. So not strictly increasing yet, but at least we can say that the function is going to be increasing. Because the definition says that for every x2 which is bigger or equal to x1, f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x2. So basically all I did was take away the, the arrow in this direction, just because we're not, um, we don't need that right now. Now we're trying to prove that the function is strictly increasing, which as we've said up here, 
means that for every x1 and x2, such that x2 is smaller than x1, f of x2 will be bigger than f of x1. So we already showed that it is definitely increasing. We need to show specifically that it's also strictly increasing. So again, it's going to be approved by uh, contradiction. We're going to suppose that the function is not strictly increasing, that it's only increasing, which would imply that there are some points, um, x1 and x2, where the function would actually um, be equal. So we're going to suppose that f of x1 equals f of x2. Now, technically, if two values are the same, we could say that f of x1 is smaller or equal to f of x2. And at the same time, f of x1 is bigger or equal to f of x2. Because of what we just set up here, though, if f of x2 is bigger or equal to f of x1, uh, that would imply automatically that x2 is bigger or equal to x1. So for example, for this one, that would imply that x1 is bigger or equal to x2. And here that would imply that x1 is smaller or equal to x2. Now for both of these to hold at the same time, because again, both of these have to hold at the same time, since we said the two values um, should theoretically be the same, the only way for that to be possible here is if x1 equals x2. But if x1 equals x2, then we're just talking about the same point. So obviously, um, f of x1 will equal f of x2. So the point is that if the only time that the y values can be equal to each other is when you're looking at the same point, then that confirms that the function is strictly increasing because for all the other points, it will, uh, the y values will be getting bigger. They won't be staying the same. And so this confirms that if x2 is bigger than x1, then f of x2 will not only be bigger or equal to f of x1, but specifically it'll be bigger than f of x1.